Hello, dog lovers. My name is Soro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to another uh, online um, live dog training uh, session uh, where we weekly go live and talk about dogs. I answer your questions and feel free to ask your dog related questions in the chat area. Welcome back. Uh, if you're new here, uh, my name is Soro. Uh, I've been training dogs for over 10 years now, and I focus on uh, training dogs using play and praise reward system rather than old fashioned traditional treats, food, aversive tools like shock collars, prong collars, choke chain collars, or domination or being alpha. So instead, we use a form of a training that uses play and praise to reward the dog. I explain it all in my channel, in my website, and on the online course that I offer. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you, before we get started on answering your dog-related questions, I wanted to talk to you about understanding the difference between a trained dog and a dog who's not being trained. In most cases, uh, it, the dogs who are not trained are visible. What that means is, uh, for instance, me, when I go to a dog park and I'm walking dogs and, um, and, and um, you know, there are dogs out there and running around and dog walk, people are walking their dogs. Um, I see the dogs and I can literally say uh, whether this dog is trained or not. It's very visible to the dog uh, from, a, a point, uh, from a point of view of uh, somebody who's observing the, the behavior of a dog. If you are one of those dog owners who is into dog behavior and analyzing dog's behavior and things like that, you could also kind of tell if a dog is trained or not trained. Uh, an untrained dog is, for, exa for example, is panting, even if it's in the walks, in the walk at the park. Uh, it probably is not relaxed, is very tense. You can tell the bo by body language that a, a non-trained dog is very uh, anxious, very tense, is probably barking. Most untrained dogs are barkers. They always get into trouble. You know, they either are lunging on people or jumping on people or dogs and do the dog owner is always calling their name, uh, trying to stop them. These dogs, you know, the reason they're behaving that way and because obviously they're not trained, but the fact is that a trained dog won't behave uh, unruly. It won't behave badly. An untrained dog would be uh, a dog who is so confused, so misunderstood, so uh, distracted with everything that can't focus. Therefore, they start behaving badly. So that is one of the reasons why you can kind of tell if a dog that, that is in the park either if it's uh, trained or not. Now, it, it has also, it takes a mental toll on the dog as well. So let's, um, first I'm talking about the dog and then we'll talk about the dog owner. It takes lots of mental stress in the dog, in the dog and also the dog owner. So the dog is always in that stress mode, always in that anxious mode mentally. Therefore, they can relax, therefore, they can enjoy everything that you're offering the dog, whether if it's a simple walk or a complex uh, situation. A dog won't be physically and mentally able to appreciate what you offer when a dog is not trained. Now, a dog owner could be also uh, on the same boat, uh, feeling the same way, anxious, stressed, um, distracted. Um, 
you can also tell from the body language of the dog owner that whether that dog owner is confident or not. And a confident dog owner walks very confidently and the dog, if, if, if it has a dog, that dog also walks very confidently. Whereas uh, a dog who's not being trained, a dog owner who hasn't taken the time to train their dog, you can tell that the way they walk is very, uh, they, they're always looking for their dog. They're not relaxed. They're always watching around. They're, they're not sure what's going on. And it's not fun to have an, an, an experience like that when you're walking or you're doing something, you know, at home, for example, if you have guests coming and you're not relaxed and you're not enjoying the environment that you provide for your guests and the at atmosphere that you're enjoying, obviously your dog is the cause that you're not enjoying. And also you're not in allowing your dog to enjoy that environment that you're providing. So you're constantly, you're either calling or yelling at your dog and you have this negative uh, relationship and um, act, act, activity with your dog. It's not always negative, you know. The, one of the common uh, funny jokes that I hear is, you know, uh, the dog is saying, my name is no. Apparently, my the dog is saying my name is apparently no because I always hear no instead of the real dog name of the dog. So it's very funny to hear these things, but that's what happens when you don't have a, um, a dog who's trained. Uh, you don't enjoy the walk when they, you're taking your dog to for walks. You don't enjoy um, interacting with other dogs and dog owners as well. You're not enjoying your dog 100% when you don't have a trained dog. Um, and you don't get 100% of your dog also when you don't train them. What that means is uh, whether you want to have your dog as a lap, to lap dog or you want to do agility with your dog or you don't want to do hiking or you want to do search and rescue, if you don't have a trained dog, you're not going to enjoy those as well. It doesn't matter what activity you choose for your dog, you have to have a dog who's trained. And the only way that you can do that is by, you know, investing time and, uh, uh, and effort to get yourself educated, which brings me to the idea that there are two types of dog owners. One who don't train their dogs and they are stressed and anxious and their dog is stressed and anxious and misbehaves and, uh, and I just explained them, you know, there, you can see them, you can visibly see them uh, in the at the parks you know the both dog and the dog owner how they are you can tell whether they are trained or not and there are the other type of dog owners who do train their dogs but they use the old-fashioned method of dog training which is using treats and tools you know food and treats what it does when, when these people use treats or food to train their dog, they start becoming dependent on food and treats in order to do anything with their dog. To even ask their dog to do something simple, it becomes a big uh, problem for them. Simple tasks of a dog becomes a major, major issue and they cannot perform it and the dog cannot perform it without involving treats or food in the training or bringing it out, right? So you become, your dog becomes a dependent on treats and you become dependent on treats as well. So you, your dog becomes in a way a drug abuser and you become a drug dealer. That's the problem when we depend on treats or food to train our dogs. We become so dependent that not only we can't do anything with our dogs without having food or treats to perform something, but also we don't do it properly. And we become so stressed that we give up on training our dogs. So my fellow dog lovers, I have good news for you. 
those days are over. You don't have to struggle anymore. You don't have to suffer anymore because I am here. Enter sorrow dog training. I have several solutions for you. I have one form of uh, offering you knowledge and information for you to become an edu educated dog lover, which is my YouTube channel. Now, if you want to go further than that, you can join my online dog training course. Let me see if I can bring that into view so you can see it. You can join my online course and become an educated dog lover. Um, using one of my services. I, I, at the moment, I offer two types of services. One is, let's see if it's going to work. It should work. Uh, one is I offer an online course, several types of online courses that you can join. So there it is. One of them is basic obedience. One of them is... Um, puppy training. If you have just got a puppy and you have trouble training your puppy, this is an ideal uh, form of training your dog. Uh, if you have trouble walking your dog on a leash, I have a course for you. If you want to train your do dog basic obedience, I have a course for you as well. I have online courses and I have virtual training as well. Virtual training is basically uh, me doing one-on-one -on -one using Zoom and work with you as much as needed. Where online courses, what you do is you register to my course and whichever course you select, and there are lots of lessons there and homework and homework. Yes, you do have to do homework. I have planned homework, daily homework. You have all kinds of things to interact and work and get get into that uh, zone that you're saying, you know what, I know exactly what I'm doing with my dog or my puppy. So I, I have um, I have these two um, forms of um, services that you can join. So if you, for example, if you go to my online course, right, uh, you'll see several courses that at the moment, five courses that I have developed uh, and, and there are the latest information of dog training and dog work that you can ever get. Instead of getting involved with, you know, Google, Mr. Google or YouTube or searching and for this and this idea and that idea, I have all the information, the latest information in here. Right? And it's updated all the time. Whenever there is new information, it gets updated. So I have puppy training courses, course. I have a, a course that it tells you exactly what you're supposed to provide for your dog on daily basis. It's called a dog's five daily essential needs, leash walking, leash training course. I have the healthiest dog training uh, method, which is I call it naked dog training because you don't really need to use anything. You're not using food or tools or gadgets. You're using play and praise to train your dog. And also I have a free course, which is the intro course to my online dog training without the use of uh, treats and food. So you're welcome to join any of my courses and become a, a, a educated dog lover that knows exactly what he's supposed to do and how he's supposed to do and be one of those dog owners who is confident to walk their dog, to do anything with their dog, enjoy their dog, puppy, raise the puppy properly, raise the puppy to become an edu a, a well-behaved dog, to become a healthy, happy, well-behaved dog. So you have the options. You can learn all about it on my uh, Sorrow Dog Training website, which is sorrowdogtraining.com. Now, before I get to the questions, uh, I wanted to ask you 
also offer you, I'm offering you a 20 minute free consultation with me using Zoom uh, next week. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is enter, uh, or I'll put the link in the chat area. All you have to do is go there and register and I'll select one of you who's watching uh, this live broadcast today and I will contact, uh, I'll select one of you and I will uh, send you the calendar and we can book the date and the time and we'll go over your dog related issue one-on-one -on -one with me. So if you want to join, just click on the link provided in the chat area and I'll see you then, okay? So let's get started on answering your questions. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, Pentax 6030. Hey, how are you doing Pentax? Good to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Uh, Gregor uh, Barsevian, uh, a fellow Armenian. Um, hello, Saro from Armenia, it's Gregor. My beagle was playing with the pincher today and when the pincher was running after her while playing, she would put her tail down. Was she afraid? Um, well, the reason these things happen is because I'm guessing your puppy beagle is puppy and was playing with the pincher. Um, those are normal behaviors, you know, uh, uh, they will learn how to, it's a body language when they tuck their tail down, uh, they learn these things and eventually they will get over it. Uh, just because they got, get scared once or twice, it doesn't mean that it's going to traumatize them. This is why it's very important to introduce your puppy to, you know, good puppies, good dogs, even adult dogs, who are well social dogs and well behaved dogs, they can tolerate puppies. You let them play and socialize with these kinds of dogs so they will have a good positive experience. If you're not sure <clears throat> about the, the pincher's behavior, it's better not to get involved, but make sure that the pincher's owner, for example, is confident that their dog is not going to harm your puppy or your beagle. So always ask, how is your dog? How is your dog with puppies? How is your dog with this type of dog? Is your dog friendly? Is it super friendly or just friendly? Or ask, has ever uh, your dog been aggressive to other dogs? If they say, eh, not really, maybe once did that, that's a sign that you shouldn't be uh, uh, involving your beagle with the, that dog. Uh, I do the same thing with, for example, in our daycare, uh, doggy daycare, when I am interviewing new dogs to come to our daycare, uh, I ask the owners, you know, has your dog been ever aggressive? And the owner says, not really, maybe, you know, once he did this or did that. If, the, if there is a little hesitation from the dog owner, I say, no, sorry, you have to refuse this dog. Uh, you have to be that picky about when you're selecting what dogs to socialize with your dog. Be picky. If you're not 100% confident and sure about the other dog, it's better not to risk it than uh, being, uh, you know, something happens and then you regret, okay? So I wouldn't worry about having the tail down. As long as that dog is not harming your dog, usually when a dog has a tail down, yeah, obviously it's not a good sign, but if it repeats all the time, then that's, that's a sign that your beagle is lacking confidence and needs more social uh, socialization with other dogs and proper dogs with other proper dogs to learn proper skills of socialization. Uh, hopefully that helps. And Barev and Shashad, merci. Uh, Seber Dog uh, says, hi from the UK. Thank you for being here, Seber Dog. That's a cute dog. I hope that's the dog. Uh, I'll come to you after 
Don Lee Filmorama. Uh, thank you for being back here. Thank you. I remember your uh, profile name. I was so close to getting my first dog, but decided to wait until these things get back to normal. Stay safe. Yes, it's a good idea, but you know, there's there's this thing going on. There's a there's a positive and negative thing happening now. It's a good time if if you're staying home and you're um, spending time at home. This is a perfect time to have a dog, have a puppy, because it's your home. You can focus on your dog. You're not going to work, and your dog or your puppy needs 100% uh, of your uh, attention, which you can provide if you're staying home and you're you're being quarantined and you're working from home, it's a good idea to actually get a dog. This is the perfect time to get a dog in a way. Uh, but if you're one of those who has to go to work and you're not uh, yet sure of your schedule and all that, then yes, it's better to wait until things get back to normal and then get a dog. And definitely, please stay safe as well. Thank you for the comment. Um, Pentax is saying, have you thought about uh, fostering in the meantime? That is a great idea, actually. You know, one of my best tips to any dog owner who wants to get a dog or is thinking of getting a puppy or a dog is go ahead and foster a dog since you're home, if you're staying home and you're being quarantined and uh, social distancing yourself, it's a good time to go foster a dog and bring it home and live with that dog for a week or two or three and see how things go. If, are you are you enjoying having this dog around? Or is it working out for you? Do you feel confident to have a dog? Are you willing to uh, spend time with your dog 24-7 maybe or, you know, spend time in general with your dog? It's a good I would say opportunity to test drive uh, the idea of whether it's a good idea to have a dog or not. So fostering is a very good idea. Um, many rescue organizations, many, many rescue clubs, they do offer the option of uh, foster to adoption as well, or just a foster, or even they, they will allow you to adopt the dog. And if things don't work out, you can return the dog without any questions asked. Uh, so there are many options of fostering. Find a rescue organization or um, a club that does offer uh, to test drive the option of fostering to adoption. You may like the dog and you may adopt it. Uh, you may not like the dog or something goes wrong, you can return the dog. Very good idea. Saber dog is saying, shame that because of no work due to COVID-19 can't afford your courses. I completely understand. Uh, I do offer a 20 minute free consultation. You're, uh, you're uh, welcome to uh, fill out the form. I have the link in the chat area. Uh, go ahead and click on it and register. I may select you as one of those lucky ones who will be have the opportunity to have a 20 minute consultation with me. We can talk about it and I can see if, if, it's, if any of my courses is right for you or not. I will offer you options. I will offer you even maybe, maybe if you're lucky discounts too. So feel free to um, register using the link that I provided. Uh, Carl, uh, hello, Saro. Thanks a lot for ch sharing your experience. We have a beagle 13 months old. He always follows commands if we have candy in the hand, but not if we take the candy away. Tips to change. This is, this, you're kind of like, you know, opening a can of worms here, <laughs> in a way. This is a topic that I love to talk about. Uh, so, you know, this is something that I was just talking about in the beginning of the show. Um, the problem with treat training, you're, you're calling it candy, but I'm guessing you're, you mean treats. Uh, 
the problem with trade training is, you know, trade training has been uh, 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 one of the top ranking uh, forms of training for the past, I would say, at least 70 years, 70, 100 years, not even 100, but 70 years, I would say, going back in history. Um, it's been one of those top rank, top uh, options of training dogs using treats. And the reason they we started using treats to train dogs because I think about 50 years ago or something like that, um, or late 60s, I would say, um, they were they were using in that time in that era they were using domination to train dogs. And it was force and domination. That was the popular method uh, of training dogs, dominance. Um, so people didn't feel comfortable. They said, you know, this is too much. The, uh, many people argued and many people, uh, they decided that that's not the way to train dogs. It's not, it's unnatural, it's not, doesn't feel good, um, both for the dogs and dog owners. So they, decided to choose a system that it's more uh, humane or more comfortable for dog owners. And they m mostly veered towards Pavlo theory, Ivan Pavlo's, the Pavlo's theory, which it wasn't a dog training theory at all itself. It was just an experiment Pavlo did that uh, to figure out um, a a study and have a study about digestion of animals and humans. It was a study about digestion which had a dog in it, uh, which rang the bell and the dog would salivate and then uh, that would tell that, okay, the dog was waiting for the, the food whenever the, the ring, the bell rang. And finally they decided, okay, this is a, interesting concept and it uses food or treats um, to train dogs so why don't we use food or treats until now until then we were not really using food or treats to train dogs uh, there was domination before that before that was uh, tools they were using choke chains and uh, even stick to hit the dog and train the dog so tree training started kind of late 60s in a way. And um, people started gravitating towards treat training and everybody started using treats and then clickers started coming in and then uh, many other tools came in into training dogs using anything but the real method of training dogs, which I'm gonna come circle back to it and we used all these tools and treats and food to train dogs because people's people wanted uh, quick results they wanted something that will give them results right away not long term but in in a way that it was done right that quickly quickly they get results but not result that it was in the long term. That is why in this day and age still, in 2020, we have dogs who have behavioral issues. We have dog owners who have no idea what to do with their dog of behavioral issue. If, if you have a dog who's trained properly, you, you're not going to ask, why is my dog doing this and that? Why is my dog not listening to me? The reason be is because you're depending on treats to use it to get results. You just want to solve this problem for now, so it will leave you alone. But the problem is that another problem is going to start coming back, and you have to solve that problem and on and on, and it goes and on. So treat training is, is not proper form of training a dog. It's not proper technique of training a dog either because realistically you're supposed to ask the dog to do something and if the dog gives you that behavior then you reward the dog with something with whatever it could be treats it could be uh, a walk 
it could be a toy, it could be anything. But most people, they don't realize this concept. And what they do is they bring the food outside, bring the treat outside, show it to the dog and say, sit. And the dog gets distracted by the treat and the food and doesn't know what, what is the situation. You know, it doesn't know what the conversation is about. Is it about feeding or is it about sitting? Is it about me listening to you? The dog doesn't get the point. You're not supposed to bring the treat out and show it to the dog and say, sit. And then if the dog sits, then you feed the dog. That is the wrong, the most confusing way of training a dog. The dog shouldn't have anything uh, as a reward in order to do something visible. It has to be, the dog has to ha want to do that task. The only way that you can teach that task to a dog is by repeating the behavior that you want. Showing the dog what you want and then repeating that behavior hundreds of times until the dog gets it. That's the only way that you can treat, train a dog. Now, in my method of training, which is play and praise, I actually was talking to a gentleman yesterday about the same idea that, that you have to, this gentleman had watched my videos and was using train uh, play as a reward to train his puppies. But the thing is, he was saying, I have no idea if my dog is being trained because we're just playing. The answer is yes, your dog is being trained without knowing that he's being trained. And that's the beauty of training my using my training system, play and praise reward system, because your dog has no idea that he's being trained. It has positive associations with everything that you do. For instance, my own puppy is always looking forward to be trained because Training for my puppy is play. But because during the play, I repeat the commands, repeat the behaviors that I want, my puppy re repeats and learns that behavior over and over and over again. So if we have a 15 minute training session, which is 15 minute play session for my puppy, my puppy says, huh, my owner is playing with me for 15 minutes, but my puppy is repeating the behaviors that I want, the sit, the stays, the calm, the recall, down, all that is being repeated and over and over. So whenever I don't have any engagement with my dog uh, in a way of play, I ask my dog to do that task. My puppy says, hmm, I've repeated hundreds of times that behavior. I know exactly what it is. We've done this before. So it does it without knowing it. So that's the beauty of training a dog properly using play and praise, which is the actual way of training a dog. The, the method of play and praise reward system comes from the idea of working mentality. Now let me explain what is working mentality. Dogs, all the breeds, your Chihuahua, your Bichon Frise, your German Shepherd, your uh, Pitbull is all working breed. We bred dogs uh, many, 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 many years ago to help us to work, to help us at our work. We needed a second hand. We needed a dog who could pull, a dog who could protect us, a dog who could dig a hole, a dog who could get rid of the vermins and mouse and this and that. Uh, we needed a dog who could stand on our lap and give us comfort. These are all working dogs. With whatever breed of dog you have, you have a working breed of dog. So working dog was designed by humans for humans to do certain tasks. And those days, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, People didn't use food to train the dog to do the task. The dog did it automatically, naturally. The 
human got involved with the dog, the dog got involved with the human and learned the behavior that the human wanted and did it naturally using play and praise. What I mean by play and praise, the farmer said to the collie, had a collie, bought a collie and said, go and let me see what you can do. And the collie went and gathered the herd, the, the sheep and brought it back naturally. The, the farmer didn't even have to train this, didn't have to teach this. And the dog brought uh, all the sheep to the place that it's supposed to be, went home, slept with the by at, at the owner's home inside the home farmer's home ate the same food lived with the same human and repeat and repeat that's how dogs were trained the dog would do anything for this human not because they're being fed or not because they're, they're getting shelter because the dog was doing its task its work so when the dog does its work the dog is 100% committed to you, as long as you provide that work for that dog, as long as you interact with that dog, as long as you spend time with your dog. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, these days, we have a lot of time to spend with our dogs. And I can tell you honestly that I feel that your dog is more connected to you than you have been spending at home. Tell me yes or no. But those days that you used to go to work for eight, nine hours a day, 10 hours a day, and you come home and you spend a few hours with a few minutes with your dog, of course, you're not going to get results. Your dog is not going to be paying attention to you. It's not going to be interacting with you. Therefore, you're not going to get results. You're not going to have a dog who's well behaved. You have to spend time with your dog. You have to invest time and effort to train your dog. And you can only do that by not depending on things, but spending time. And that is the biggest secret that you learn in this channel. Spend your time with your dog. Play and praise your dog. You'll see great results. So that's how you can get rid of treats. If you are dependent on treats, remove the treats or food out of your mindset and start working with your dog from the heart connect with your dog literally from mind and heart and soul not depending on what you have with you to offer your dog because you are desperate offer yourself offer you 100 percent of you the same way that you offer yourself to your partner you give your love to your partner and your partner gives back to you 100 percent that's how you share and offer your dog you and say, I'm available for you 100%. And you'll see that your dog is going to give you 100% back. Not even 100%, 200% back. So that is my, I, I told you that I, that opens a can of worm if you ask me a question like that. But it's a great topic and I love to talk about it. I hope that answered your question. Um, Gregor is uh, saying, thank you. So informative. I really appreciate that. Cheers. Shachat mercy. All right. That's an Armenian conversation we're having. Okay. Don B. Filmar is saying, thank you for all the advice. You are very welcome. Uh, Saber dog is saying, uh, I tried training with food. Saber would follow the commands until the food ran out. <laughs> then he wasn't very interested anymore. He would come when called, get the treat, and then go back to where he was. So, so cruel, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> so that's what happens, you know, when you depend on food and you start working with a dog with food, that's what you're going to get you get that kind of results. You get a cold relationship. You get a relationship that the dog says, you are my delivery person. You know, you deliver food to me. I have an app and I call that app and brings me food. That's what you are in general. Uh, and it's so, you know, 
cruel to hear comments like this because I know how much you love your dog and how much you want your dog to respect you and love you and give you back. The only problem is that you have started the wrong on the wrong foot. You have started involved getting involved with your dog from the beginning with the wrong mindset. I, I keep telling you guys this that you can't most dog owners they can't do anything without treats. I go to dog parks and it drives me crazy because my puppy is a beagle puppy and you know beagles are have they have a very strong nose. Uh, they, they scent, their scent power is so extremely uh, strong that they can scent everything uh, miles away. So if I go to a dog park, my beagle goes and lands on every dog owner and every dog owner is carrying treats with them. Somewhere in their jacket, they're carrying treats. Everybody is needing and is depending on treats. They can't go out with their dogs or do anything without treats. It's like they are carrying drugs to <laughs> uh, uh, just in case if the dog is run out of drugs so they can supply the drug. It's so sad to see dog owners like that. And it, it is just, you know, sad to see and it drives me crazy because every single time I have to grab Annie, my puppy, from these people, you know, because I, let me guess, you have treats in your back, in your butt with you. Yes, it's always yes. So that's what happens when you are dependent on treats. You become so dependent on so emotionally detached from your dog that you forget that you have a dog and you have a relationship with your dog. You, have, you don't have a relationship, actually. You have somebody who's your feeding and taking care of and is not giving you back anything, unfortunately. We have Carl, uh, thanks for a great answer. We will try this. Your latest answer about cooking the raw food was working great. Now he loves to eat. Best Skip regards. Skip that question. Huh? Skip that question. Oh, uh, let me, this is a comment. I'm just gonna quickly address this. Uh, now he loves to eat. Best regards from Beagle Ricks in Sweden. That is great to hear. I'm so glad that you have uh, finally figured out, uh, what was that? Uh, finally figured out and switched the food and you're feeding a great natural good food to your beagle. And Rex is gonna really appreciate and love you even more, not only because you are feeding Rex proper diet, but hopefully you're starting to train it without the treats as well. And thank you for the feedback. Uh, we have Juju. My five months old miniature schnauzer doesn't want to drink water. Water. I have tried everything. How do I get her to drink? Um, are you? What are you feeding your dog? Juju, can you tell me what kind of diet are you feeding your dog? Um, if it's kibble and it's not drinking, there's something wrong. Definitely, there's something wrong. But if you're feeding uh, wet food or raw diet, it is very natural and normal for these kind of dogs not to drink water. Like if my beagle who's on raw diet, <clears throat> my older beagle, Harvey, who's on raw diet, <clears throat> if he drinks water, it's like very surprising. Wow, he drank water. Literally, they don't really need to drink water. The only time that my dog, my beagle, drinks water is when we have given him a dry treat or some kind of treat that is salty and he'll eat it and drink it drink water so but if your dog is on kibble or dry food and he's not drinking water i'm guessing there is something happening you may want to check with the vet find out exactly what's going on with maybe internally there's something going on. Um, most of the time, based on my experience, if a dog is not drinking, it has to do with something with the bladder, obviously, a bladder infection or something like that. 
it does hurt them when they drink water, so they don't drink water. Hopefully, it's not that serious. Uh, but just uh, quickly let me know um, if you're feeding kibble or raw diet or other type of diet. Uh, next question is from Gregor. One more thing, please. As an experienced beagle owner, coach, and lover, do you think there there, there is anything, any things I should know about training my beagle? Yes, beagle training is a little bit different than other breeds. Not, I'm not saying that beagles are different breeds, and um, you know, most breeds have specific uh, um, structures and specific type of care and maybe training that you need to provide. Uh, for instance, you know, shepherd, German shepherds, uh, you need to work them 24 seven. You have to get them mind and body working 24 seven. Otherwise they will drive you crazy. They will drive themselves crazy. Beagles, on the other hand, we call beagles uh, five legged dogs because their nose is always on the ground. The problem with that is that if you allow a beagle <clears throat> to have the nose on the ground and sniff all the time, <clears throat> excuse me, what happens is they will, that, uh, that uh, instinct, that uh, drive will take over 100% and it will shut down all the other instincts. Uh, their hear, hearing goes away, <laughs> their sight goes away, they don't see or hear anything. They just send, find a scent and follow that scent. Now, you can use training to kind of, you can't turn off the instinct. If the, the drive that a beagle has, you can't turn it off. Uh, so this apply in other breeds as well. So if you're other breed owner, just think of it this way too. In general, you can't shut off that drive, that instinct, instinctual uh, drive that the dog has. In this case, we're talking about, about uh, um, beagle, the scent, the smell, sniffing. You can't turn it off, but what you can do, you can manage it. You can control it. The way you control that is by training. For instance, I teach uh, a beagle a heel command which keeps the head up uh, you know and looking at the owner or the trainer rather than the head down because if you allow the beagle's head to go down boom you're you're, you're lost you're gonna lose the war uh, you have to start teaching um, all the basics including the heel command to your beagle so it it keeps its head up and it keeps it focused on you. That's how you manage and control a drive of a dog. Um, you can't really shut down a drive uh, of a dog. You can manage it. Most cases, the dog is born with that instinctual drive, but there are some cases that the dog doesn't have the drive at all. So for instance, uh, my first beagle, Jonah, uh, that one, let me see if I can, there we go, Beagle Jonah, uh, he had the drive on instinctually 100%. He would go and hunt. He would go and disappear in the woods for five, 10 minutes and then would come back. I knew he would always come back because he would go, he was doing his task, he was doing exactly what he was bred for, to find something that he was, his, his nose was giving the signal to go for it, bark he would go and bark woo, 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 as a, and he, as he would disappear the bark would disappear to woo, 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 and then would disappear for a while and then woo, 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 would come back uh, so after five minutes or so he would come back i knew that he would come back so i wasn't worried about it i was controlling him i was training him to have him not to do that often so i started training him in a way that he would not do that anymore. He wouldn't go anymore. He wouldn't disappear anymore. He would come back all the time. He would stay with me. Now with Harvey, 
this one as you can see harvey doesn't have the drive he is drive of uh hunting it's maybe 10 maybe even five it's not there so with him i didn't have any issue of or difficulty having him not to take off he'll st always stay with me near me by me and now i have annie i don't have annie's picture here with me to show you i should have print one uh, annie is a beagle who's very visual that's what i've noticed she is not much of a scent beagle is more of a visual uh, beagle dog and that comes from one of the breeds that he's been mixed with. Uh, we don't know yet what it is. We're going to do a DNA test. But as far as, as long as we know, he, she's a mix of a beagle, basset. We don't know the dad part. That's the mom part. Uh, the dad part could be anything. I'm guessing a husky or a, a shepherd or something like that. Because the way she plays also, I play uh, chuck it. Um, uh, fetch with her and the way she lures herself and watches the ball when we are playing is very uh, um, border collie I would say style collie style so I'm trying to manage that now so you have to find out what it is that your dog is shining and just manage it. Don't try to erase it. Don't try to even get rid of it. You won't get rid of it. You can only manage it. So when it comes to beagles, make sure that the head stays up and focus on you rather than uh, anything else that is happening around. Hopefully that helps. Canal, I'm guessing, canal. My dog has started to have panic attacks after he got sick and runs into the house, sniffing and howling. I've taken medicine from the vet. Would you suggest anything else I can do? Thanks. Um, well, you know, this is kind of a medical issue, I would say. You know, it's not more, more much of a behavioral issue. When you have a dog who has panic attacks like that in a severe form that gets into gets into that it needs medication and also needs uh, get into that sniffing and howling uh, state of mind is I would say you know probably 70% medical issue and 30% behavioral so you you can do as much as you can do to control that behavioral part the medical part has to heal automatically and that would happen only if you feed the right food remember this food is always a medicine the food that you feed your dog could be either medicine or could be poison the poison is part is the part that it causes a dog to have medical and health issues uh, which is mostly related to if you're feeding your dog kibble or dry food. Kibble or dry food is a poison for dogs. It's not natural diet for dogs. That can, uh, it's very processed, uh, highly processed food, which is not going to not only help to get rid of this medical issue, but it's going to worsen as the time goes by. So I would suggest change the diet at least for a month or two, give fresh food, give fresh vegetables, fresh raw meat. And if you hate raw, dealing with raw, at least cook that meat slightly and feed your dog for a month or two. See if that, see if that medical condition improves or gets worse. I guarantee you it gets improves, it gets better. Now, once you help that part and then you start dealing with the behavioral issue, the sniffing and the howling is just a natural behavior of a dog that the dog starts focusing on. If you don't want your dog to do that, just train it again, you know, start basic, basic obedience, do uh, maybe even intermediate level, train your dog so you have an opportunity to 
help your dog and your dog has a, a, a way of solving the mental conflict that it gets in its mind so can get rid of it so you can help your dog both mentally and physically mentally by training and physically you can feed the right food and food is always a medicine for a dog as long as it is a good fresh healthy natural diet Yes, even my puppy is a beagle. Oh, your puppy is a beagle too. So yes, so definitely. So if it if it's a beagle and it's sniffing and uh, you were saying that it's sniffing and howling, that, that those are natural behaviors of a beagle. If your dog, if your beagle didn't howl or sniff, I would say there's something wrong with that dog, with that beagle. So those are normal behaviors. Saber dog uh, saying managing sabers prey chase drive is pro pro proving to be one of the biggest challenges I have faced with my dog. By the way, is saber the shepherd in the profile picture? Um, and if that's your dog, um, so you have a shepherd. Looks like you have a shepherd, and prey drive, prey chase drive is the issue. I bet you played a lot of ball games or you offered a lot of um, stuffed toys to Sabre when it was puppy. Yes or no? Most of the chase drive of a dog, the prey drive of a dog is being fed when they are puppy. When a, a puppy is designed and bred for a certain task and brought to our homes and in human homes. And you can either um, take care of this, um, this um, behavior and control it, or you can feed it to grow and become a nightmare. So, nope, okay. Uh, but I'm sure you did. I'm sure you provided some form of games or things like that, that it fed that behavior. Now, the other problem could be that, you know, when your dog was looking at, let's say, uh, birds or um, a squirrel were passing by or things like that, it, you didn't redirect Saber's um, behavior towards you or the task that you wanted. The reason most dogs are are stuck in that chase uh, prey drive is because they have been designed and bred to do that task. It's a ma matter of us humans being able to control that uh, behavior. The only way that you can control that behavior is replacing that behavior with a behavior that you want. So if you don't want it to chase, you have to replace it with something. What do you want Saber to do instead? Let's say you want Saber to sit and just watch. Let's say that's, that's one of the things that you want it to do instead of chasing. So teach it, teach Saber to sit and stay. Work on sit and stay. The way you're going to do that is at home, you're going to do this training. You're going to provide this, um, this te technique. You're going to practice this technique. At home, you're going to bring out his Saber's favorite toy that it wants. You're going to put it in the corner, and you're not going to let Saber touch it at all. Maybe only time that it gets involved with that toy, maybe it's one or two minutes per day and then goes away. So it becomes a great value for your for Sabre. And what you do is every day you practice on controlling and managing Sabre, not to look at that toy or getting get fixated on that toy at home. Practice sit and stay, practice um, a lot of controlled uh, training, right? Um, to the point that you can manage Sabre indoors rather than taking it outdoors. Now, if, um, if Sabre 
is hard to control outdoors for the next month or two, I would suggest don't take Sabre to that environment that gets him going. I'm guessing it's a him. Um, don't take him to that park or that area that helps him to get into that zone of chasing. Maybe for a month or two, practice everything at home. 80% at home, 20% outdoors. Don't worry about not taking him out. For the next month or two or three even, focus on practicing control and management indoors in the house before you take him out. Do it at home so you have some form of man control over Sabre and Sabre has some ideas of what he's supposed to do when it's put in that situation. So the first week or two or even three weeks, don't have any expectations. Don't have any expectation of Sabre listening to you because you're still practicing it at home. I hope those uh, guide those um, solutions will help. So work on it, maybe it will work. Um, Gregor is saying amazing, thank you so much, you're welcome. Uh, yes, he's cross GSD Siberian Husky. Oh yes, okay, I can see both of the now, yes. Um, mainly Tom, I bet he's very energetic, I, I'm sure too, yes. Um, energy of three dogs, <laughs> yes. Um, we have a few more minutes. I'm going to explain about that too. Uh, let me just see what's going on here. Yeah, GS design can not make the word. It dries. He is uh, intact. Receive your email regarding my mini poodle to me. Uh, thank you very much. I will do everything you told me. Oh, okay. Great, great. Elizabeth, thank you. Nice to see you here. Nice to uh, being here. Thank you for being here. I'm um, great that you got my message. Nice to have you. Mm, I'm sorry? Nice to have you. Yeah, nice to have you here, yes. Saber Dogs is saying, saying thanks a lot for your advice. You are very welcome. So you were saying that uh, Husky energy is very high. You know, um, they are high energy dogs in general, but also, you want to control that energy. You want to control that um, high energy uh, mentality. You want to teach Sabre calmness rather than excitement. Now, I bet you take him for a long hikes and walks, a lot of activity, a lot of exercise. <clears throat> the other tip that I have is for the next two weeks, don't take Sabre out more than half an hour a day. I know the first few days would be hard. Sabre is going to annoy you. But the fourth day, you're going to see a different Sabre. Energy level is going to drop. Try to uh, give less exercise. I'm not saying that you know forever. For now, reduce the exercise level as well. Um, maximum half an hour a day. I know it's crazy, but it works. Um, we have San, Sa, Sanjeev is saying, hello, how do you do, Saro? Very well, I'm doing very well. Uh, I'm staying safe and cautious in this day and age. As you can see, the world is going crazy. Hopefully, you are also safe and healthy. Be safe, be healthy, stay healthy. Um, stay indoors. Um, I hope you enjoyed this live show today. I had a ton of fun uh, interacting with you and talking about dogs and answering your questions. Um, feel free to uh, visit my website, um, sorrowdogtraining.com, and check out my uh, online courses and what I offer these days. Uh, I offer two types of uh, services at the moment and one is virtual training one is online course if you need help i can offer you any of helps uh, help kind of help that you need using any of those and feel free also to uh, join me using the link that i provided to uh, win a free 20 minute consultation with me sometime next week i will pick one of you 
who joined me today in the live session uh, and entered. Uh, I pick one of you and I will contact you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, any further questions, leave those questions in the comments area. Make sure to give it a thumbs up uh, if you like this video, if you enjoyed this live session. Uh, make sure to subscribe uh, to the channel as well. And until next week, have fun with your dog.